So now we're going to move on to transcription and translation. So this is a very general process of gene expression. When you express a specific gene, basically it means you're using that genetic information in DNA and make the protein product. Now that process has two steps, transcription and translation. Now you may ask, why can't we just have a one step, right? From DNA to protein. Now that's not possible. If you remember the cell structure, let's say that's the big cell. Okay? And then there is nucleus, and that's where DNA is located, right? The protein-making machinery, ribosome. So ribosome is located in the cytoplasm. Now, the problem is DNA molecule is very, very big. So even though there are little pores, oops, let me redraw it. There are little openings on the nuclear membrane. DNA is simply too large to get out of the nucleus through these openings. So that's not going to happen. So DNA is basically confined into the nucleus. And ribosomes cannot enter the nucleus. So this creates a problem, right? The ribosomes cannot access the genetic information in DNA. But we have a way to solve that. We can transfer the information from DNA to something much smaller. Uh, let me erase that. And this is something smaller is messenger RNA. Remember DNA can have you know hundreds and thousands of genes, right? Really, really big. But mRNA is only the copy of one particular gene. So it's a lot smaller than DNA. mRNA has no trouble getting out of the nucleus. And just like the name, mRNA is like a messenger, and it's going to deliver the genetic instruction to ribosome to make proteins. Okay, so it has to be a two-step process. And so here's the definition. Transcription, that's the information flow from DNA to mRNA, right? So this mRNA is an exact copy of that particular gene in DNA. Now, I know you're going to say, you're not correct because DNA and RNA have a different nucleotide, right? DNA has thymine nucleotide, but mRNA or all RNAs have uracil nucleotide. That's correct. But think of them as something similar, right? But they're just in different um, types of nucleic acids. But everything else um, is the same, except that T is replaced by U. Okay, I'll show you an example later. And then translation is the next step. The mRNA will be used as a template, and that information um, is going to be read by ribosome to put together all the amino acids, right, to make proteins. So that's called translation, because now you're looking at two types of molecules, right, nucleic acid and a protein. So it's almost like you're translating between two different languages. So that's why it's called a translation. All right, now let's look at transcription first. Okay, so DNA has two strands. When we go through transcription, only one of the two strands is used as a template to make mRNA. Now, just like a DNA replication, the template DNA strand is read by the enzyme from three to five. And then the mRNA strand is synthesized from, from five to three, right? Same thing. Two DNA strands are antiparallel. And the one DNA strand, the one uh, messenger RNA strand, they're also antiparallel. They go the opposite direction. So this is where that gene is located. So you can see there will be um, an enzyme coming here to split the two strands so that other enzymes can access uh, one of the DNA strands and read that and copy that information to messenger RNA. Okay, now the T7 study manual uh, mentioned this briefly. So I'm just gonna um, kind of go through this real quick. So at least you know the terms. And if you see something about this, you have a little bit knowledge, hopefully enough to answer the question. But if you struggle with this, um, don't worry, don't spend too much time on this. 
I think there's a low chance that T's will ask you about sense and antisense strands of a of a DNA molecule. Okay. So if you look at my drawing, the green is a DNA. So you can see there are two strands, right? And the sequence for the strand on the top is TGA, TTC, GAG. Okay. And then you do the base pairing, and that will be the sequence of the complementary strand, right, which is at the bottom. Okay, now let's say we're going to use the strand at the bottom to make messenger RNA. So again, we're going to do the base pairing, right? So A pairs with U. And remember, there, there are no Ts in mRNA, so it has to be U. C pairs with G. That's the same. Nothing changes. T pairs with A. So you figure out the red sequence, which is the sequence for the messenger RNA. Okay. Now, the bottom strand is the template that you use to make the mRNA. Now the question is, the mRNA sequence is almost identical. I said almost because, again, there's that T's and U's right, that are different. But regardless of that, which strand, which DNA strand do you think has the identical sequence as the mRNA strand? Is it the top strand or the bottom strand, which is the template strand? So compare the sequence here. That's sequence one, sequence two. Which one of those two sequences are identical as the mRNA sequence? It's sequence number one, right? So regardless of T's and A's, that's the same. G, A, and T's and U's, we just think of them as the same. C, and then G, A, G. So this is the fascinating part about, trans about transcription. So the mRNA sequence is actually the same as the non-template strand. And this non-template strand is known as the sense strand. And that's where the gene is located. And that's where you find the sequence of the gene that you want to express. This gene sequence in the sense strand is the same as the mRNA sequence, right? So you know that this particular gene sequence will be delivered to ribosomes to make proteins. And that's why we call this strand, the one on the top, the sense strand. It really just means that it contains the gene, and that's the sequence that's expressed to make the protein. And then we call the other strand, the template strand, as the antisense strand, because the sequences are complementary. They're kind of anti each other, right? Again, because of complementary base pairing. Okay, so that's basically what sense and antisense strands are about. It's just the two strands of the DNA. If the strand has the gene that's expressed, then that's going to be the sense strand. And then the other one is not expressed, but it's used as the template to make the MR strand. Okay? So that's going to be the antisense strand. Okay, let's look at a practice question. Now, I say this topic is more advanced uh, and is less likely to be on the test because of two things. First is the direction, which can be very confusing. And I don't think direction will be a big part of the T's question. Um, another thing is I give you the mRNA sequence, right? And I want you to figure out the DNA sequence, which is kind of going backwards. So those are the two things that I think are a little bit tricky than probably most of the T's questions. Okay. Now let's um, just skip the direction for now. If you have the mRNA sequence here, I'm going to write it out, and you try to figure out the DNA sequence, you just do the base pairing, right? And then make sure you're mindful about the U's and T's. C pairs with G, U pairs with A. A pairs with, remember in DNA, that's T. 
and then U still pairs with A. Okay, so that's the DNA sequence. Now let's add a direction to it. We know the mRNA sequence goes from five to three. And we also know that these two strands have to be anti-parallel, right? Meaning that they go the opposite direction. So DNA, this is going to be three, okay? So on the same end, you gotta have two different numbers. And then this is going to be five, right? Five and three, two different numbers. All right, now you just need to figure out which one has the correct sequence you're looking for. Now, you can actually eliminate two answers very quickly. It asks you for DNA sequence, and A and B have used. So those are not the correct answer. Oh, I just noticed that I made a mistake over here. G pairs with C, right? I don't know why I put A in there. I think I even said C, but then I wrote A on there. Okay, now C and D are the same, right? But C doesn't have the correct direction. It should be the opposite, right? Three, two, five. Okay, I want to kind of keep it short. So each time you don't have to learn too much, that's a little bit overwhelming. So today we're just gonna focus on the transcription. And then next time we'll have another short lesson on just the translation. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video and I will see you next time.